Hi everyone, I'm Kun Tai Chai and I'm going to introduce the paper Data Synthesis via Differentially Private Markov Rand Fields in this presentation. In practice, people may want to publish their data so that they can be used in researches or industrial applications. But we also know that some private information should not be revealed. So the problem is how to release a data set while preventing the private information from leakage. The key idea is that we can only learn from a population of individuals and we should learn nothing from a single individual. That is, we are only interested in statistical results. Mathematically, differential privacy provides a rigorous guarantee for this kind of privacy protection. It is based on the concept of neighboring datasets. Two datasets are neighboring if and only if one of them can be obtained by removing a tuple from the other one. This is the definition of differ differential privacy. Intuitively, it enforces that the randomized algorithm F outputs any possible result with similar probabilities for neighboring datasets. In this way, differential privacy ensures that the impact of any individual of the input dataset is bounded by epsilon and delta. We use a differentially private algorithm to generate synthetic data. The type of tuples of the synthetic dataset is the same with the original version. Therefore, we can directly publish the synthetic dataset for others to use. We can even use it to perform data mining tasks. Now the problem is transformed into generating a synthetic dataset with differential privacy. Here, we introduce the motivation of our method. Generating synthetic data is equivalent to derive a data distribution with differential privacy. We represent the data distribution with a contingency table, which counts the number of records of all combinations of attributed values. Then we use a differentially private algorithm to generate another contingency table. After that, we sample synthetic records from it one by one. The point is how to generate a new contingency table with differential privacy. A naive solution is directly adding noise to the table. However, the size of the whole domain is exponential in the attributed number, and the counts in the contingency table could be very small. Therefore, directly adding noise leads to an extremely noisy table, which could retain poor utility. Since the full contingency table is too large and too noisy, can we decompose it into much smaller tables? The answer is yes. We may use small marginal distributions to approximate the original data distribution. We add noise to these marginal distributions to satisfy differential privacy, and then we reconstruct a synthetic distribution from the noisy marginal distribution. This method can be achieved by a graphical model. Learning a graphical model can be broadly divided into two steps, learning the structure of the model and estimating the parameters given the structure. After structure learning and parameter estimation, we can sample synthetic records from the model. Since the parameter estimation problem has been addressed by a previous study. Our work focuses on the structure learning step and we adopt the zero method to estimate parameters. Existing solutions for differentially private structure learning of graphical models have some limitations. Here are two main drawbacks. None of them is applicable to a general model. Some solutions are designed for Bayesian networks, which impose considerable constraints. And some are for binary or pair pairwise and directed graphical models, which may not be able to model the data properly. In addition, many state-of-the-art solutions do not deal with the redundant information of marginal distributions. For example, A and C are correlated, but their correlation can be properly captured by A, B, and B, C. In this case, querying the marginal distribution of A, C is unnecessary and leads to more privacy leakage. Later, we will see that our method is general and handles the redundant information properly. Now we introduce our method. Here is our model, where m takes values from some marginal set. Theta m is a parameter vector that maps each marginal value to some parameter. It tries to capture the correlations with marginal distributions. Its structure is determined by the marginal set. 
This is an example of the model. We may learn the parameters theta such that the marginal distributions of AB, BC, and AC of the model are the same as those of the data distribution. For our model, structure learning is actually a step of discovering the marginal set. And once a marginal set is given, we adopt a previous study PGM to estimate the parameters. So how to find the marginal set? We may first construct an attribute graph and only search marginals in it to control the time and space cost. The attribute graph should contain as many as correlated attribute pairs. Therefore, it is more likely to capture all the correlations in the data. And if we triangulate the attribute graph, it should contain no large maximal clicks. In this way, we control the time and space cost. We use algorithm one to construct the attribute graph. We use the noisy R score of each attribute pair to measure the correlations. It is less sensitive than other metrics, and therefore the noise skew of the R score is very small. The key idea is to equitably add edges to the attribute graph with high R scores, subject to one constraint. If we triangulate the attribute graph after adding the edge, the domain size of each maximal click should be smaller than a pre-specified constant. Once we construct an attribute graph, we can construct a candidate marginal set from it. The candidate marginal set determines all the potential structures that we find later. The candidate marginal set is composed of the theta useful marginals. A marginal satisfies theta useful if its domain is sufficiently small. That is, we require that the average count in M should be at least theta times the noise skew G. The key idea is that although a marginal distribution with a large domain may contain more information, it is too noisy to be used in the model. It is actually a trade-off between bias and noise, and we use a hyperparameter theta to control the trade-off. For the initialization of the marginal set, we select a marginal for each attribute. We may view the marginals as features, which provide basic descriptions for attributes. We will use our scores to measure the performances of features. After initialization, we refine the marginal set iteratively. At each iteration, we first estimate the parameter of the model and then find the marginal in U with the largest noisy L1 distance. Here. Mu M is the marginal distribution of the model. P M is the marginal distribution of the data. So a large L1 distance means the marginal may not be captured properly by the model. And we add the marginal to the model to complement the additional information. In this way, the model approximates the data distribution more and more. Finally, we use the refined model to generate synthetic data. Now, we turn to the experiments section. We measure the performance of our method, prime MRF, against state-of-the-art methods. The right line shows the performance of our method. Lower TVD means better performance. It can be seen that our method outperforms existing methods with a large margin significantly and consistently. SVM classification gives the same result. Thank you.